Well, hello, and welcome to part 8 of my Persian game. Uh, actually, not a whole lot happens uh, during this particular set of turns. I just uh, build up my civilization a lot, so if you're starting to find it really dull and boring, you can skip to the end where there's a summary of what happened. So this video is going to be a little bit different than the others. I'm going to intersperse each uh, turn with just some pictures of a certain area of the world and how it changed. So one thing you'll notice here is that uh, I'm pointing out that delivering uh, caravans and freight will oftentimes make the civilization you're delivering it to uh, more happy. So that's something you might want to keep in mind. If you can, you can deliver before um, you contact them, and they might be less likely to demand stuff away. And you'll also notice that I showed the rushing of, uh, my, of uh, Hoover Dam. And the reason I showed that is in part because uh, the video for 1650 uh, got corrupted, or rather it was too long, and uh, Therefore, the encoder or something, some part of my program didn't like it. So I didn't get video. So anyway, here is uh, 1660. Yeah, so Pisa is uh, just the city that I built to be ne to have a city near the uh, Zulus. So I could just dump in a freight without having to worry about stuff. So something I started uh, was, I guess I think it was this turn, was making deliveries that uh, in excess of the science that I needed. Okay, so here what's going on is that uh, the gems is blocked, but uh, by delivering a couple of, uh, of uh, caravans, I can get the gems unblocked by making the trade route, by having other trade routes go into the city. So then I can deliver a demanded gems for lots of money. There will be more on that later. So as I was saying, this is, this, I think this was around the time that I started uh, delivering, okay. Here I'm mining the hills, because if you mine before you start building, then uh, you can actually have a mine under your city. Maybe I shouldn't have done that, because I don't think I really built a mine elsewhere in the game yet. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. I think I can afford a little bit of suboptimality at this point. I've probably done much uh, worse things. And the reason that I don't really mine hills very much is because you can get a force to give you two shields for no work. Or you can spend however many uh, uh, settler or engineer t turns to get one extra shield out of a hill. Uh, the forest is generally preferable. So, as I was saying about trade, I started delivering more caravans than I needed strictly for the science, and that basically meant I could just rush more stuff. And so, eventually I got to the point where I was... Uh, rushing stuff out of most cities every turn, instead of every other turn, which is more expensive because you have to uh, put some shields in the box from empty. So usually you'll do that by rushing a temple, so it just costs some uh, extra money to do that. And if you are going to be delivering more caravans than uh, your science amount, than your science cost, just uh, make sure that you don't go beyond uh, around 32,000 or 30,000 because if you do it will reset your science counter to a like, negative 30,000 or something like that. So you notice something to be careful of. It probably won't happen but you know it could. I mean you'd be hard pressed to spend uh, 30 grand in a turn anyway. Well maybe if you get uh, a really big civilization. You can do that.
So something you may notice uh, watching this video is that for a while uh, there's actually you're going to see a fair amount of pollution around. Uh, I spent a fairly significant part of this turn set uh, just dealing with pollution, getting the infrastructure in, which in a lot of cases was actually um, building uh, what are they called mass transits. That's what I really needed. I also started building factories, uh, trying to get the uh, Hoover Dam pollution uh, bonus, oh, uh, reduction, or rather the reduction you get from having, uh, what do they call hydro plants? That was because I misremembered exactly how the pollution worked. I thought there was actually some uh, direct subtraction. In the end, it doesn't really matter because uh, you know the way the pollution works. And so the way it works is that each shield you produce uh, makes one triangle of pollution, and each citizen you have in your city uh, makes some amount of pollution, depending on the technologies you've discovered and what have you. And so, uh, an improvement like uh, a hydro plant will uh, divide the number, will divide the pollution you may get from shields in half. And a, if you have a recycling plant, it'll mean that the number of uh, pollution is divided by three. So then you add up your pollution, and in the end, you subtract off 20. So that's why you don't see pollution for a while. Uh, even if you, you're producing shields. So I just remembered exactly how it worked, and built uh, some plants, some factories. Which, I don't think there was, like, I don't think there was, it really uh, didn't matter. And I didn't really build them where it was like strictly bad to or anything either. But maybe I built a few more than I should have. And if that explanation sounded a little bit confused, it's because I was a little bit confused while playing the game as to exactly what the pollution was like and how the pollution worked. I finally looked it up after. So, one thing to keep in mind about the pollution is that if you don't want to build a mass transit, you can keep the uh, shield production of the city really low, and that might help to avoid the, the pollution. So here the Zulus and the Vikings cancel their alliance that they made, and the Egyptians steal automobile. I didn't do anything about that because I wasn't, I didn't really want to, and also having the Egyptians have automobile is pretty nice because then there's a chance they'll build the super highways. So there's new Arbella which I forgot to uh, set up properly. So I built Cure for Cancer because I was noticing that I needed to put special effort into making cities at size 3 actually celebrate. So the extra happy citizen just helps because uh, then you don't have to go and make sure that they're working with special or all ocean or something like that. So, I did uh, record a lot of cities being built. I didn't record them all. And actually, during, when I was recording this game, I basically started. I only recorded what I thought when I thought there was actually going to be something interesting happening. So, I didn't even have all the cities being built if I had decided I wanted to put them in later. Some more caravans, or great, I should say, being with it here. And so that's I'm gonna bribe both of the, uh, whatchamacallit things instead of the standing one. Or attacking the other and having it lose. 
I'll just disband them again. Some production. And so there, finally some uh, freight leaves the uh, that island there that I spent forever defending and spending money on. Yeah, so it was actually a while between when I uh, played the set of turns and uh, now that I'm actually doing the commentary. I actually played the turns fairly soon after I posted my last video, but it turned out that there was all sorts of editing to do, and I just, it just became more of a chore than anything else, so I didn't want to do it too much. And, uh, so here, starting to deliver a lot. And then, uh, and then I went to, started going to grad school, so I'm busy. So here I'm building uh, the city uh, point tire, basically to make sure that when the alliance with the Russians is cancelled, I don't lose my ship chain, because that city will be closer to uh, my, what are they called, uh, transports and ship chain than the Russian cities. So you'll see that uh, how quickly my railroad got built. I was actually building that railroad uh, to uh, basically uh, render my ship chain obsolete. That went from that went to the Egyptians, because also that way I can just. Uh, part of it was also for uh, gameplay, and is that that way I could just uh, use. Go I didn't have to decide exactly what to send each turn. To the Egyptians, I could just have a whole bunch of shipping uh, near Egypt and then just send uh, freight there as needed. So, on this turn, I decided to buy Liverpool. I didn't see why uh, the English needed Liverpool. Or Warwick, either. And, you know, I had the money. And, you know, when you have money from trade, one of the things you can do to spend it is to buy cities. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I am lowering the trade from that city to Pyramses in order to uh, make it so that the oil uh, trade route doesn't stick because it's not one of the three best trade routes from uh, Pyramses. So you just uh, so you deliver a high demand uh, a really good caravan or freight then you uh, lower the Trade of all cities that send that send that commodity to your the city you want to deliver to. If you have uh, more than three other, if you have three other trade routes, those ones will be selected instead of the ones. In this case, it's oil. So I had uh, three or more trade routes to Pyramides that didn't involve oil. So I lowered the demand of all the oil cities. Sent in a sent in a junk caravan and. That recalculated the trade routes to Pyramides, and so the so the oil trade route wasn't sent there anymore, and that meant that uh, Pyramides demanded oil again. So I could deliver another uh, another oil uh, freight, and the oil bonus is like three and a half or something, so it was really really good. So there. Yeah. And do more such deliveries. Yeah, pretty big amount this time. So I'm doing the same thing here. I'm lowering the cities that uh, 
belt gem that uh, sent gems to Makondo in order to free up. Because I think gems is also like three or something else. And if you want to, you can keep a list of all the cities that you've sent a certain commodity to. If for no other reason than that, it gives you a list of the cities that you need to put back in order after you've finished your uh, deliveries for the turn. Now, if you're just getting into doing, into using um, trade and stuff, to, uh, using trade to enhance your game, that isn't something I would worry about. In fact, it's something that I don't do very often myself, and oftentimes when I do, it doesn't work out very well. I just happen to know this opportunity, so I did it. But, you know, don't worry about, like, shifting demand around. Yeah, if you're just learning, that's more of an advanced thing to do. So there you may have noticed that a settler... Uh, I, I disbanded a city, which I didn't show myself building. And that was because I built it, and then I found out that there was another city right in the... in the city radius, so I didn't really want to keep that city there. I think there was some other reason too that I didn't want to have it there. Because of, like, I think it might have been a bit more than just being the city radius. I don't remember. So anyway, I decided that uh, I would get, I would give all the uh, civilizations uh, technologies, that all the technologies that I had, you know, sort of reset the tech level for the game right before everyone gets hostile at 1750. I ended up not doing that for the Mongols. I had a pretty nice uh, hides uh, tra trade going on with the Mongols, and I really didn't want to uh, mess that up. I, d I just couldn't bring myself to give the Mongols all, all the text that I had. So strictly speaking, this is a bad idea from a gameplay standpoint. Well. But, you know, I figured, you know, why not? Let's make it a little more interesting. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I want to discover two technologies in the same turn. I want to discover flight, which I will get by caravan delivery. And then I want to produce enough science to get uh, radio as well. So I'm just calculating how much I'll need, and so what I'm going to do shortly is rush build SETI program as far down the list as I can, so that most of my cities will have the uh, extra boost in uh, science. I could have also get tech gifted, give, given text to the Mongols to uh, reduce my science cost, but you know I figured if I'm not going to give them all the text you know, to help myself out, I might as well not give them text to help myself either. You know, that makes sense. Basically, I just said, you know, I'm not giving them all my text, so I'll make it a little harder on myself and not give them any. I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to uh, win this game by spaceship or conquest. I will probably go and conquer someone, but I haven't uh, completely decided. I haven't decided if I'm going to conquer everyone or just uh, finish it off a little earlier using the space race. So something you'll notice that I did there is I moved out the uh, Alpine troops in order to make the city actually happier. I tried doing that a while ago uh, in another video and it didn't work out, but in that case it did. So uh, just the way the uh, happiness worked out, it uh, made every it made a couple people content instead of having extra happiness. So anyway, this is. Uh, End of the game, you can just see some statistics of how things change a little bit. I built, I increased my city count by 40%, and I doubled my income but more than doubled my costs. And things like that. I increased my number of freight despite uh, delivering so many. Built howitzers and mech infantry. And more than doubled my engineer count as well. So, thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time.